Hey everyone, Andy Robertson here with CQE Academy and today I'm going to share my four tips to help you get started on your journey to become a CQE. Today's tips, like I said, are for those of you who are brand new to the CQE journey or maybe you started and you had a false start and you want to get back in the saddle and you're ready to get started again. Today's tips are for you. So tip number one is to study the CQE body of knowledge. So before you even get started studying, it's important for you to know what you need to study. And the CQE body of knowledge does a great job of breaking down all of the topics that are gonna be on the exam. So there's seven major categories of topics, management and leadership, quality system, product and process design, product and process control, continuous improvement, statistics, and risk management. And then not only does the body of knowledge tell you about all of these various topics and the subtopics within them, it tells you how many questions on the exam are gonna come from each category. Not only does it tell you the exam questions, it tells you how well you need to know each topic. This is called the cognition level, you can see it here. Essentially, this is based on Bloom's taxonomy. It's a hierarchy of learning. So maybe some topics you just need to understand them. Some of them you have to be able to apply them. Some of them you have to be able to analyze data or analyze a problem using that particular tool. So the body of knowledge really helps you understand what you need to know and how well you need to know it. The next tip, tip number two, is to take a practice exam. So before you ever start studying, a practice exam is a great way to uncover your strengths and weaknesses. Again, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to use all of this information to create a study plan, all right? Because tip number three is gonna be to create a plan. Before you can create a study plan, you have to understand what your strengths and weaknesses are. So you can head on over to CQE Academy. I've got a ton of free practice exams, statistics ones, non-statistics ones, any topic on the website has starter exam and a hard exam. You can do all of them for free. Go check it out. The other thing that's linked below in the description is a link to the CQE Body of Knowledge as well as more information on my website, CQ Academy, that helps you better understand the body of knowledge. So all that is linked below in the description. And once you've read the body of knowledge and you understand what's gonna be on the exam, and you've taken a practice exam to uncover your strengths and weaknesses, now it's time to use that information in tip number three to create a study plan and put the most important topic first. So what is the most important topic? Well, it's statistics. So in all of my time helping people pass the CQ exam, what I find is that the number one topic that people don't understand or they don't know early on in their journey is statistics, okay? And the reason I tell people to put statistics first is because it's the most important topic on the exam. It has the most questions and it's the most difficult. Okay, and if we put statistics first in your study plan, there are a few benefits. So the first benefit is you can do what's called space repetition. So let's say you start in on statistics and you move on to continuous improvement or some other topic. You can come back and you can re-quiz yourself on statistics and that spaced repetition, that spaced retrieval will actually strengthen your understanding of statistics. The other thing you can do is you can continuously quiz yourself. In fact, I'm gonna do a whole separate video on effective study techniques, and this is one of them. Taking lots of practice exams helps strengthen memory and retrieval. And so if you start in on statistics first, you can continuously quiz yourself on statistics over time, and that'll help you better prepare for the exam. The other benefit is that even though the CQE exam is open book, if you're staring at an equation in a book, but you haven't really practiced using that equation or you're not familiar with all of the variables and the unique intricacies of how to work that equation, having that equation doesn't help you. On other topics like cost of poor quality or lean or risk management or whatever, you can flip open your book during an exam and you can look up cost of poor quality or the quality system or whatever that unique fact or detail is they're looking for, you can look it up. But in statistics, if you don't know it, you're gonna struggle. So you need to go into the exam with a deep, fundamental understanding of statistics. The other reason that I really recommend people focus on statistics first is that because they don't know statistics, they're not using it in their day-to-day -day work. But if they put statistics first in their study plan, they can immediately start using statistics in their day-to-day -day work. 
And by doing that, it reinforces the learning, it reinforces the memory, and it, it has an immediate impact on your career, right? Your career might start to grow before you even become certified because you're starting to put new information into practice. And then that practice reinforces the learning and the memory and makes it more likely for you to pass the exam. So I strongly recommend that you put statistics first. Make sense? All right, tip number four is all about habits. I'm a huge believer in habits and the tip is to harness the power of habits to work your plan. Once you have a study plan, it's time to work your plan, okay? And so there are a lot of great quotes about habits that reinforce or that help support this idea that habits are so effective. So there's this great quote that says, motivation is what gets you started, habit is what keeps you going. When you first sign up for the exam, you're gonna be super pumped, super motivated to dive in and start learning. Over time, that motivation fades. And what's gonna get you across the finish line is a habit, a daily study habit that you can lean on, that you can go to, to help you prepare for the exam. John Maxwell says, if you wanna change your life, change something you do daily. The secret of success is found in your daily habits. So if you envision your career, if you becoming a competent, go-to, respected subject matter expert in the area of quality, you have to create this daily habit of practice and study to help you get to where you wanna go. There's a, another great quote from John Dryden who said, first we make our habits and then our habits make us. If you can make a habit around daily studying and daily practice, that habit will eventually make you into the person you wanna be. You will become that respected authority on the topic of quality engineering if you put in the time and effort and the habit of daily study and daily practice. And so I wanna give you some tips on how to create a good habit. And this all comes from a book called The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. And what he does in this book that I love so much is he breaks down a habit into its component parts to help us understand how to create good habits. And so a habit is fundamentally three things. It's a cue, it's a routine, and it's a reward. And all three of these different things create what's called the habit loop. So for example, let's start with the cue. Every habit needs a cue. This could be a sight, a sound, a smell, a place, a time of day, a maybe it's an emotional feeling. There's all sorts of things that can trigger a behavior. And that's exactly what a cue is. It's something that triggers the routine. It triggers the behavior. And so for your habit, your daily study habit, you need to create cues that trigger a habit. So for me, it's a time of day and it's a place. Every morning I wake up at 5 a.m. and that's my cue to start my study routine. I wake up, I pour my cup of coffee, I sit down and I start reading, I start practicing, and I start writing and learning. And that daily study habit has grown over time into what you see over at CQE Academy. And so you need to do the same thing for yourself. Pick a time of day and pick a place and commit yourself to every time you sit down in that place at that time, that's gonna be the cue to start your daily study routine. Now the study routine itself, this is the actual act of practicing and studying. And I'll do a whole nother video on ineffective and effective strategies that you need to be using to make your study practice as effective as possible. And then lastly is the reward. I don't wanna overlook this because this is an important part of the habit loop. Eventually, over time, as you put in the practice and you're going through this habit every day, the intrinsic value, the intrinsic reward is a feeling of satisfaction, but it's also that feeling of seeing your career grow. Now, there's things you can do in the short term to kind of jumpstart the habit loop. You can intentionally plan to give yourself a reward because of that habit loop. It could be a small piece of candy, a piece of chocolate, a cup of coffee. I've done this before with exercise habits. I said, hey, after I go to the gym, I'm gonna give myself a little cup of coffee. And after a while, the actual feeling that I got after a workout became the reward that I was actually end up seeking. But in the short term, that cup of coffee was a great motivator to reinforce that behavior, that habit loop of going to the gym every day. So really focus on a reward. I want you to explicitly pick a reward. 30 minutes of TV, maybe it's some video games with your kids. Pick a reward that you're gonna really enjoy because that reinforces the habit loop. And so if you can do those four things, study the body of knowledge, take a practice exam, create a study plan and put statistics first, and then use that and create a daily study habit, you can pass the CQ exam. Make sense? 
All right, if you liked the video, click the like button below so other people can find this. If you wanna hear more tips, tricks, advice, or even just teachings on CQE topics, hit the subscribe button because I'll be posting a lot more videos here in the future. And then if you're really serious about becoming a CQE, check out my online course, Become a CQE in Six Months, where I help you create this daily study habit. I give you lots of practice exams. We put statistics first, and all of it is based on the CQE body of knowledge. Anyways, thanks so much. I hope you really liked the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.